Lark advanced slowly, his body sinking into the grass until Mac couldn't tell where he went. With a silent curse, he tried to follow the Marine's movements. Mark popped up next to a thicket and held a casing up. They staged here. Mac slipped in behind a large oak tree and hugged the trunk. Do we take out the sentries? Negative. He brought a pair of field glasses to his eyes and studied the western fence. There's only one on the western side, one on the roof. If we remove them at the same time, we should have at least a few moments. Mitchell's voice cut through his earpiece. For recon. Mark sighed and nodded. Copy that, Upcom. Recon only. He switched off his comms and looked to Mac. Unless we find out our people are neck deep, then all bets are off. Copy that. Mac shot him an evil grin. Westward ho! The two branched to the left and eased up on the clearing facing the western fence. Mark motioned to Mac to take the guard on the roof while he took out the fence patrol. He held up three fingers, and the two operators counted down. Almost simultaneously, both carbines belched silver-plated death through suppressed barrels, their receiver actions making more noise than the bullets. The two commandos slid into the fence, and Mark grabbed the bottom of the chain-link fabric, ripping it from its ground anchors, allowing Mac to roll under. Mac propped the fabric with his knees while Mark slid under, and the two made for the nearest lit building. As Mac came to rest alongside the building, he keyed his comms. Opcom, signal check. He waited only a moment before looking to his XO. He shook his head and stepped to the side of the door, stacking along the north side of the entrance. Should we switch to first squad's frequency? Already have. It's silent. Mark nodded toward the door, and Mac pulled it open slightly, checking for booby traps. Convinced it was clear, he pulled it open further, and the two men slid along the shadows. At the far end of the warehouse, they could see a plywood mock-up of some kind, with a small crowd of men surrounding the north side. Looks like we're late for a party. He motioned Mac along the southern wall, behind crates of equipment and supplies. The two worked their way closer, pausing only long enough to make out what held the rapt attention of the crowd. Mac grabbed Mark's arm and pulled him back behind a crate. They have them. Who did you see? Spanky and John. There was somebody else, but there's too many of them between us. I couldn't see who. Mark nodded. They have at least three. That doesn't mean they have them all. Eyes and ears open for any they may have missed. Mac was about to acknowledge when something fell onto his head. He swiped at it and looked upward into the rafters of the building. Lamb gave a subtle wave from the shadows. He pointed further down, and Jacobs gave a mock salute. I think that answers your question, Major. Mark pointed to his earbud, and Lamb shook his head. He pointed to the group below. Mark nodded and held up two fingers. Go to alternate frequency. Lamb adjusted his radio, and Mark's earpiece buzzed. Delta 3 and 4, standing by for orders, Major. What's their strength, 3? I'm counting 19, sir. Most are armed. Flashbangs? Mark shrugged. Lamb nodded. As soon as you're in position, sir. You heard the man? Mark patted Mac's shoulder. Take up position behind those crates. We'll catch them in a crossfire. He watched as Mac worked his way further down and got set up. Mark took a deep breath and prayed that he wasn't about to get his men killed.